Okay, we are live and I want to welcome each and every one of you out there to the very first episode of Dare to Bear. Dare to Bear uh, is created out of the heart to find true stories because in Asia, typically we keep our dirty linen behind closed doors, our skeletons in the closet. And my question is, why should that be? when the same stories would inspire other mothers, other women, other people out there so much more. So um, my very first guest, I've got a very good friend. Her name is Renee, and she has been through so much. In fact, hi, Renee. Hi. She is a remarkable person. Uh, today, Renee is the founder of uh, uh, the, the Groove Dance School. And they specialize in pole dancing. So because of COVID, you know what they did is she came up uh, with exotic dancing, chair dancing, lap dancing. I think it's just interesting. Uh, so as a woman, I would so want to learn so much more about how to move my body sensually instead of just awkwardly. Okay, so that will be another session where we will become where Renee has uh, wonderfully accepted to be our expert. So, woman, if you want to know how to seduce your husbands in bed, um, she is the expert. Uh, and yet, who she is, this confident, happy single mother of two child today, is not how. She wasn't, we were not born like that. She has been through a lot and she has bravely decided to just share, you know. So, Renee, thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. And I just wanted to ask you. So, viewers out there, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to type it in. If you have any encouragement for Renee, type it in the chat box as well. You know, you've made time to be on this chat with us and I appreciate you. So, um, let's engage. Okay, so um, Renee, I I'm just going to dive straight in, right? Yes, um, I, I know that, um, like, when did you discover that your husband was cheating on you? You know? Um, actually, during pregnancy, because I have two kids now, so they are eight and nine. So during pregnancy, first child is still not that bad. But after that, when, he, when, when um, he's born and... Shortly after that, I got married. I, I'm sorry, I got pregnant again. So it was like what it was like back to back pregnancy. Um, during that time, as you know, like we go through so much changes in our body, you just don't feel good about yourself. And the 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 full four years, I would say four years, is where you uh, were pregnant, delivery, and shortly after that, you got pregnant again and you deliver again. And throughout these four years, that I was busy with my babies. It was just so much for me to handle because he wasn't really there for me and he's usually out drinking and coming back like really late um and i i, I was just handling like my kids on my own with like mother-in-law mate and but you know it's just different when the husband is around um so actually that was a very it was like the lowest point of my life because i don't feel good about myself my appearance and my mental state wasn't stable because i i just feel that my husband is not there for me um so can i ask you wait renee can i just ask you right was your husband always like that what did he because you mentioned he wasn't at home but before your first child was his lifestyle any different or was there a drastic shift after you had your first child he began to keep late nights longer or it, it was actually it was it was after the first child. Okay, there was also there was also some major changes in his career that his career just boomed during that time. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So during that time, it was exactly the same time when I gave birth to my first child. Um, so no, knowing that during that time he was like not always not there, always socializing, and and I have like young kids to look after. Um. So it makes it very hard for me during that time. Um, and also that I actually found out about him um, cheating on me a few times. And I, I during that time, I just felt that there's just so many things for me to handle. I can't do anything right now at that point of time. Um, it's like you have your young kids to handle. You found out that your husband is cheating. But what can I do? I, I, I can't do anything at that point of time. I just felt very, very, very weak and um, just vulnerable. You, you, there's nothing you can do about it during that time because like both are babies. Yeah. 
how how so how did you find out that he was cheating on you? Was it through a friend accidentally looking at his phone? Uh no, it wasn't. It wasn't me looking at his phone. It was like I bumped into him before when I was like out doing some running some errands. I bumped into him before, and I have friends telling me that they saw my husband with another girl holding hands, kind of stuff. And I found out another one that they were traveling together for holiday, and I caught them in the airport. <laughs> so that how did you feel? You know, like as of the point where you you went to the airport, you spotted him going away with another uh, woman. Like, how did you feel? Because I I think for me, I would. Oh, you just shattered. You just shattered. You just go like. Okay. okay did you like, confront him? No, what, 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 no, I didn't. I didn't. I just walk away. Just so he away. didn't even know that you you were there. He didn't even know. He didn't even know. Yeah, so so what Wait, what, let me what, let me just so viewers out there, what would you do if you spotted your husband cheating on you? I think for me I I would go up there and give him a tight slap and you know, I really uh, want I, to I, do that. I really want uh -huh, to do uh -huh. that. But the thing is, um I have my young kids to to actually uh, take care of as well. Um okay, during that time I was already in the stage where I felt that things are not working out in the relationship. Um, when, when I found out that's the reason why I had to do this to go and see if I'm right or I'm wrong. I was hoping that I'm wrong, that he is cheating on me. So um so I just um told myself I'm gonna go to the airport and just give it a try. I hope that I don't see anything. I hope I'm just wasting my time. So at that point of time when I saw it, I didn't know how to react. It was just like okay, done, done, this is that's it. Um, you just have like it's just you just got shorted. I just stood there and just stone, you know, you know what I mean, just stone and just go like stood in a corner and just like didn't do anything for for a, for a long while before I realized what's going on. And um, before this, it was already relationship was already going bad. Um, so I already also had felt that I need to do something about it. So. That 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 was that was how that was what that was what happened. When I, I got out. it. Yeah. So so the relationship was already not working out, mm -hmm. and you were still in denial. But when you literally saw with your two eyes yes. that he was really going overseas with someone, mm -hmm. that's when I mean, did you decide anything at that point? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not just like going overseas. It's not just at the airport. It's like you were holding hands in. Mm -hmm airport walking around yeah it was not just you know being like you can you can be a friend but why do you need the whole hands right yeah so so during during that time um also i think most women out there are, are also like that like okay okay never mind let me just close one eye close two eyes i have kids let me just try and keep this relationship as much as i can uh but but the thing is before this happened right we were already not in a very good state in a marriage because uh, kids are very young. Kids are like two years old, three years old, and then like um, he was scolding us every day in the house. Every day was just verbal abuse, insulting me, like saying like how bad I look, like 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 really bad nasty words to say about how I look, uh, to make me feel bad, to make me feel really low. To me, it's um emotional abuse every single day. And then kids are suffering as well. And um, kids are scolded every day for nothing. Like they are only so young. Like why are they, they don't, they don't deserve to be treated this way. So, but of course, um, at one point, there will also be people who will think that, never mind, just, you know, I'm married. I have kids with him. I'll try and keep this relationship as much as I can. But I came to a point where I felt that this is not the life that I want. I can't live like that. And my kids don't deserve to be treated this way. They don't deserve to be to, to, to be growing up this way. They, they, they deserve to be happy. And why is their daddy doing this to them? So, so it was also like a lot of people tell me that, no, no, because you have kids, you better stay. You, better, you know, don't, don't shake the boat. Just, you know, keep, try and keep the relationship. Mm, but I felt it was more like um, for my kids, I have to leave the relationship. My, my, my kids don't deserve to be treated this way. Yes, on my side, he is insulting me every day, making me feel so lousy about myself, 
so it's all everything just came together and i felt i am done after that airport incident i know i am done there's no turning back yeah so, so i i get and i'm very encouraged to hear like I think what I hear is if it was just you and your husband, you might have tolerated that for a few more years and try to make it work. Maybe. Is it? Maybe. Maybe. But, but, but because of your kids and yeah. his verbal abuse on them, you yeah. were like the mother hen who was like, no, not for my kids. Yes. I want to protect them. Yes. I want that's them right. to be happy. Yes, that's right. I, I, I thought I needed to take action to make sure that my kids grow up happy, not being scolded every day. Yeah. But did your husband change suddenly or even when you were dating, he always had, you know, he was shouting quite a lot or it was it the stress at work or? Um, actually, before that, he wasn't like that. It, I, I, I actually felt that it was related to his um, career, like, because it was like a boom time for him, for his business. Yeah. So I, I felt it was totally related to that. Yeah. Mm. So um, if his business would then boom, he would, he, so he changed, la, in essence, did he? He yes. changed to become more critical of you, of yes. your kids. And yes. just now you mentioned that, you know, you were feeling low emotionally, mentally. Did you go into depression or? I think I was, man. <laughs> I don't even know. But it was just, every day was just like in this mode where, okay, I'm going to just wake up, do this, 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 done. Don't, don't, don't disturb me for anything else already. I don't want to think about anything else out there. Every day was like that. And I always make sure that I'm always smiling. But, you know, mm. it's just for my kids to see that I am okay. But actually, I'm not. <laughs> and also because I run my school, whenever I see my instructors, my students, I have to make sure that I look okay too. Wow. So I have to put out a front to look like I am all good <laughs> wow yeah. yeah how did you do that so emotionally you were just shattered and yet you had to put that mask yes yes i had to because i can't let my kids know that i'm upset i can't let them see that something is wrong although they are young but they can feel it they know it yeah so now now that you are no longer together so you decided to file for a divorce yes I, I and did. he was agreeable uh, initially, he was a little surprised. Why did I do it? Uh, but mm -hmm. after I told him, I am done. I am done with this. Um, enough is enough already. I already endured years, year after year. I thought maybe things will get better, but no. It's um, it's, it's it, it came to a stage where I felt that I have endured enough. My tolerance level is like okay, I'm done. And 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 the main thing I actually asked myself also like. Is, is also that I'm not happy. I'm struggling every day to like even wake up and be out there. I know inside me, everything is just shattered. Everything is just not right. And I'm just making sure that I live my, my life through every single day. I was like in a living hell. That's it. That's what I can say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I'm glad. I mean, even as a friend and hearing you share, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I wish I was there for you in some way. <laughs> And you didn't share this with anyone, yeah, from what I'm hearing. You just kept it quiet. Yeah, that's right. I just kept it because I didn't want anyone to be worried for me. Even my parents didn't know until the, the, the end, end of it, okay. until I've decided to file and everything, all these things that happened. No one really knows so much. Uh, I just kept it to myself because I didn't want anyone to get worried. I, because I, Also, that I felt that I need to put up a nice front in front as a school owner yeah that i'm okay <laughs> i got it i got it so yeah. and then uh your children so how did you share it with them because your main aim was to protect them right do they know or i'm sure they know now but how did you break it to them um in a way that i don't really need to break it to them it's sad to say actually because even during the time when we were together, he saw them in Singapore. He saw them at home. So my, my kids don't really see them. They don't really see him already. So when we divorced and um, so we were forced out of the, our house. Okay. It was, oh my God. When the divorce is happening, when I think when it's just settled, all of a sudden, oh, I've sold the house. Live in two months. 
like, oh my God, where am I supposed to go? Where, must, where am I and my kids supposed to go? Yeah. Um, but okay, anyway, I went through that part. It was it was good. We, 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 we survived. Till, till so he didn't, he didn't even warn you. He, one day he just tell you, I've sold the house, you've got two months to leave. Yes. And then what, what did you do? So I asked him, so where, where are we supposed to go? So, so then after that, he went to get a rented place for us. But it was so inconvenient. Um, it's so far away from school. Every day I have to like take such a long way to send my kids to school. And, and my kids were suffering. They, they, they don't get to have their meal time, uh, meals in time because we just take too long to get home. And we have to eat out every, every single day. Um, yeah. So that, that, that was what. And it, it, it came to me as a shock. Like, you got to leave in two months then. And he had already moved out of the house during that time. And he, basically, he just didn't really care. Oh, so, sorry. Just now, I, I sidetracked like so much. So, so just now I mentioned, how do I break it to my kids? So actually, they don't I don't really need to break it to, to them so clearly. Because during that time, uh, he, even when we were together, he wasn't really in the house. And... He will, usually, even when he's in the house, he comes back very late, like after drinking, sometimes don't even come back home. And um, and all, I mean, if not, he'll be overseas. He'll be like, oh, I have business trip, I have business trip. So it, it, to, to my kids, when he left the house, it doesn't make so much of a difference because... It's he just was a, never there anyway. It was just a little bit more that he is not around. And I am the one who is there for them 24-7. I send them to school. I go through homework with them. I, I do play and everything with them. I, I, I cook with them. I do every single thing with them every day. So daddy there or not there to them, it doesn't make any difference. So I was glad in a way because I was also worried like how to tell them. They don't, if they ask me, what am I supposed to say? But um, no, nothing. <laughs> so now the so kids eventually don't when ask they for... Do they ask for the mm -hmm. father now or not at all? Uh, not really. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. But of course, um, of course, during uh, after the divorce, he actually sees because he, he has like once a week um assessed. So he he brings them out once a week, uh, to go out and play whatever. So once a week, it's just once a week. So in a way, they sorry, but they, they were not really looking forward to see him. I understand. Because yeah. from what I'm hearing, you are the mom who was always there for them, providing for them, looking after them, teaching them. So how did you manage? You know, like internally, you are in turmoil. You have a yes. business, you know, you have a dance school to run and you have kids yes. who are young. How yes. did you manage single-handedly or did you have like your mom to help you or someone? Uh, just a mate. <laughs> just a helper. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I basically handle all the stuff on my own, on my own. Um, and also that, of course, during that four years when I was like kind of out of action because of kids, I, I just handled, I just left the school to, to be handled by my instructors and my staff. Um, but of course, it would also mean that I wasn't there to like, like to oversee the whole thing, the whole running of the school so much. So the school was also, also sadly not doing very well during that time. Like, because my whole life was just, like, upside down. <laughs> so how did you begin the process of healing yourself such that you even dare to talk about this openly now? Oh, you know, was I, there, did you go for causes? Did you, you know, how, how did you heal yourself? Um, it, it was like, um, okay, this, this, this part is the, the best part. Okay, so what, what, what I did was I just felt that, okay, I have done it. I've, I'm divorced. So I just want to like, um, um, to like, okay, firstly, I want to make sure that I look good. Okay. I just want to make sure that I look good. So my appearance was something that I felt that I need to work on. And I told myself that, you know, um, um, first, first, first impression counts. First impression is always very important. So my first part that I thought I need to work on is on appearance. So, uh, of course, I started to do a lot of workouts. I started to train. I started to go to the gym. I started to get back to my pole and like train so much, so much. Still, I was so addicted to training that, I mean, and, and it, it's very addictive as well because the more you do it, the better you look. And, and you just felt like you just want to continue doing it to, to look better and better. And of course, when you look good, you feel good, um, your self-confidence go up. And you're still thinks that nothing can stop me. I'm going to do whatever I want out there. 
no one can stop me now. So I, I have, have a question. I, my life. I, I got that. I have a question from uh, one of the viewers. Said, the viewer said you went through so much. And how did you manage to get up? Because I think like from what you say, if somebody is like, you know, constantly telling me I'm bad, I'm lousy. Mm -hmm. But so the question is, how was there anything like, how did you manage to pluck yourself up, to shift yourself out uh, from the inner show? Uh, it was it was basically just telling myself that I need to work out more. Okay, if, if working out is one thing that I felt that because I have been working out a lot all my life, like since oh. I've been working out a lot. But during pregnancy and delivery, there's just so many things going on that I can't do my workouts as much. So this is something that I really miss. That oh. I want to exercise. I want to I want to work out. So this is something that I really really miss. So that was the first thing that I went to. Although I kind of a little bit dreaded it during that time because I, I felt so weak. I felt like my body wasn't as strong as before. I felt that I wasn't as flexible as before, but don't, don't look good as before. But that was one thing that I felt, hey, I miss fitness so much. I want to go back. So that's when I kept doing, yeah. So for all you viewers out there, what I'm hearing is really you got connected with what made you happy even before you were a mother. And fitness was a critical part in your life. So you just went back to, you know, what you love, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. I basically just went back to, okay, this is the first thing that um, that I did to make, to get myself back up. And the more I do it, the more, the happier I feel, the, the prettier I feel. And, and, and as I do all this, I start to mix around, as in I start to socialize, I start to meet people you start to talk you start to chat so you just everything just feels like oh you know the world is so nice everyone's so nice <laughs> <They're> so badly <laughs> there are so many nice people there yeah. so you started to socialize started to chat you make me happier yeah <laughs> so that, that. that was that was why yeah then uh and also because of that you know you'll get your self-confidence up again just feel good everything just you know goes smoothly yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think what I'm hearing, right, is as you connect yourself with what makes you happy, like for you it was fitness, you spend more time with your kids, socializing. Were you always someone who was quite a quite um uh, like quite an extrovert? Like you enjoy making friends? And you stop after that because of your family or the kids? Uh yes and no. I wasn't really someone who like socialized a lot, a lot, but I do have like a small group of friends that I like to hang around with. Um uh, so that, that that was one part that I I missed totally because of delivery, pregnancy, kids and all. You just can't meet anyone. It's just very hard to meet anyone. Um, yeah, so that, that actually plays an important part as well. Um, started to meet up with like, you know, see my parents more, go go and visit my friends, go to the house, catch up for drinks, anything, you know, just do all the girly stuff out there together. I think that's yeah. one critical part, you know, like even as we begin yeah. to heal, it's like the community, yeah. we get, we, we become more in touch, right? And the isolation yeah. just fades away. Yeah, that's right. So, so you know, I, like with all these things, socializing, fitness and all, I just feel good about yourself. So I just felt that I, I need to love myself more. I want to love myself more because I have to take charge of my own life and everything I have to put myself first. Um, like, a lot of people will be like, oh, my kid's more important, everything. But the thing is, if I don't take care of myself, how am I supposed to take care of my kids? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So if I feel happy, um, my, my kids will be happy too. <laughs> Very yeah. important. So for all you moms out there or fathers, we are the most important, right? Like, you know, when the airplane comes on, the first time I heard that, they were like, in event of a turbulence, when mm -hmm. the mask drop you wear your own mask first. Yeah. I was like, huh, really? I thought I'm supposed to help my kids. But I think that's a very key life principle in exactly what mm -hmm. Renee, you're sharing, that if we don't top ourselves up, mm -hmm. then what flows out of us is really just nothing or we are almost poisoning the kids, right? And, yeah. I mean, with all our negative tantrum and just stress and, you know? Yeah, yeah. So self-love is number one. Mm -hmm. Self-love, very important. Some, some, something that everyone should and being happy um like like do, um so when i'm happy I, I can run my school better so i can oversee things better and things things just you know when you're happy you feel good about yourself everything just falls into place nicely 
and started to work on uh, on my school more during that time as well. Uh, started to like come up with new syllabus, new courses, interesting um, events that, that I can run for my school. So instructors are happy, students are happy, uh, my, my staff is good. So um, then that, that was that was like everything just went like great. And and kids were happy because um, they I, I let them do whatever they want. I, I'm always with them to like experience new stuff. We do a lot of sports. Like at this moment right now, my kids are in the ninja training. <laughs> so <laughs> to, to be here. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. I've, I've, I've never looked back. I mean, I felt that it was the best decision that I've ever done in my life to call for divorce. What is one advice that you would give mums out there? You know, mums who are in a marriage that they are not happy with and just surviving it. Uh, okay, I, yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of women out there who uh, just will just, just, you know, leave it like that. Um, they, they, they don't uh, put uh, action to it. Or how, how, how do I put it? Um, they, they just don't want to, don't dare to change. Don't dare to do what they think they should, and they just keep themselves. They just stay unhappy throughout their whole life. And also, a lot of people will think that because I'm old already, why do I want to file for divorce now? I am already so old. You no, know, but age is just a number. Okay, age it doesn't matter. So that is one main thing. I'm forty one. So, but you know, I'm not young. <laughs> Yeah, but, but age really doesn't matter. So I, I also want to encourage all the women out there to, you know, tell your, to ask yourself every single day, are you happy? So that's like so important, you know, and stop, please, stop, stop, stop pleasing everyone out there, just like what I did. Like, we are always trying to please everyone out there, making sure everyone's happy, but for me, <laughs> yeah. So the main thing is always ask yourself, are you happy? So if you're not happy, go and do something about it. Yeah, and of course, it will be a painful process. I mean, there'll be like a lot of changes, a lot of people might be affected and all, but the end result will always be beautiful because you know that what you're trying to do is to make yourself happy. That is what life's supposed to be. <laughs> so you need to take charge, no matter how, how old you are, whatever. I think the most important for us living, we need to live happily. Yeah. I love what you share. Like it doesn't matter your age, whether you're 21 or you're 41 or you're even 61. Mm -hmm. If you are not happy and the result is probably a relationship, then you have the power to change it. Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. You have and, to take charge on that. And I love what you share about um, as you discover. I mean, we will talk about this more in depth later, but you know, this whole uh seduction in bed you know the uh, course that you came up with that's so interesting because i think a lot of women don't embrace our sexuality um completely right like sex is something that we don't talk about openly it's closed behind closed doors you know how did you how did you regain your physical you know your confidence you know to, to the extent where you are now like come let me teach you pole <laughs> dancing, lap dancing, chair dancing, and even yeah. seduction in bed. It, yeah. How was the process like? How's the process like? Um, okay, I came up with this also because um, I, I, I learned from my previous relationship as well. Like, why did my husband leave me? Why this, why that? You know, like appearance. And of course, like everything. Just I learned from my whatever experiences that I had in my life. So, and also I feel that women out there, I mean, every woman should, we, we, we should play our part as well to, to make sure that we are attractive enough for our, for our men to, to adore us, to love us, to keep, to, to, to stay with us. So of course they have to play their part. So um, like seducing, seduction, uh, like lap dance, seduction in bed, stuff like that. It's something that will satisfy their craving. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Last, yeah. Uh -huh. So how did you, like you went for causes or you, you know, how, how did you, yeah, like evolve? Uh, okay, I, you know? actually, I was, I was doing, uh, I was doing, exot I was learning exotic dancing when I was like, was like more than 10, like 15 years ago. Yeah. So I was, I was actually doing that, but um, I was doing, I was learning, I was uh, teaching as well, exotic dancing. 
So it's about like how to touch yourself, how to feel good, how to move your body, and also it's also part of dance. So 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 um and during COVID and everyone stuck at home, I just felt that okay, no one has a most, most people don't have a pole in the house, so I can't do pole Zoom class. So what can I do? Okay, everyone has a bed, <laughs> and uh-huh. everyone has a bed, and you can just do sexy stuff and sexy moves. And my students love it so much. They come for like three four classes a week with me. All wow. the seduction and exotic dance classes. So I do like exotic dance on the floor, chair with the chair, lap dance, seduction in bed, classes like that. Yeah. That's so interesting. <laughs> so for all you viewers out there who want to learn the art of seduction, um, yes. so I, I think it's not just like, even as I hear you, Renee, it's not just for my husband, but what I hear is the message of self-love for me. So yes. sex does not need to be something that I do out of obligation to my partner, mm-hmm. but sex mm-hmm. to me is something that I get to enjoy as well. Yeah? yeah, And then the connection becomes something that is deeper, a lot more meaningful and enjoyable overall. Yes. Instead of it was just purely out of duty, right? No, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> That's not duty. yeah it's supposed to be an enjoyable thing between two. And seduction is a very important part of sex. <laughs> so you know you want you want both parties to enjoy. I want to enjoy as well. So like when I'm more confident with my body, I'm willing to like do whatever I want. He can feel it that I am I'm loving myself that I am I am confident of my body. So it makes it wow. more attractive. Wow. wow. I, I get you. I mean, uh, having a confident lady in bed, I'm sure for men out there, and even for me, you know, having a confident partner mm-hmm. is so much more attractive than, you know, just holding back, yeah, and doing mm-hmm. the same old boring poses, right? Yeah. <laughs> or positions, you know? So... so so do you have anyone in your life now to practice on your new uh, dance step or family is, you know, your and work are your main priorities? Uh, okay, yes. Um, I have a partner right now. I have a super awesome partner right now. He's amazing. Um, and yeah, and we just got our own house. So so now it's like going through the renovation and everything. So we're going to move in together and yeah. So everything is good. So and my kids are super happy with him, and he loves them. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank so, you so yeah. much, Ren. <laughs> Sorry, what do you say? Everything is moving on very, very well. I hear you. And what is the time frame from the point where you were at your lowest to mm-hmm. you know when you feel you've rec- you've recovered? How long did you take, you know, to recover? Um. Let's say like okay, um divorced and two three years, three two years, two years and like actively one to two one one year or maybe okay, I'm like so lost with the time. So everything is just like moving and I'm just doing stuff to make myself better. Uh okay, after divorce, okay, maybe I would say like one to two years. Yeah, oh, when I started to get back to training, working out making myself feel good, going out with friends. And I think we're just setting out well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Renee. To all you viewers out there, mm-hmm. I will be having Renee as my guest on uh, Experts Exposé, where she will be showing us, ladies, all the different dance moves. Guys, you can tune in to watch as well if you want. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think the main heart of that topic will be self-love. You know, how as yeah. we embrace our physical body, uh, mm-hmm. As we love ourselves, then out of the abundance of that, that love gets spilled out to another partner, to our kids, and to everyone around us. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. Thank you so much, Renee, for the wonderful share. Thank you for daring to bear. Mm-hmm. Um, and each and every one of you, if you have any questions, or if you just want to check out her Instagram mm-hmm. pictures, I think it's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, or even, um, do you have the pictures on uh, the dance, uh, the group dance school? My That's your website. Your studio? Yeah, it's your studio. studio or about my personal? Your I don't know where are your pictures personal or your studio. Yeah, pictures, uh, okay, stu- studio wise is just uh, it's groove dance school one word. So groove dance that's, school. That's, okay. Dance school one word. So that's where we have our school. Like we promote our classes, marketing stuff in there. And okay. I have two Instagram account. You can check okay. them both. So one of it is more family and uh, fitness. The other one is 
all self-love. <laughs> <laughs> so which is the family and fitness one? You know, is that a name? Groovy Scarlet. G-R-O-O-O-V-Y. Scarlet. Scarlet, S-E-A-R-L-E-T. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm typing that into the chat oh, box so you all can go and look for it. And then and the... The other the one, one, self-love, totally like all about me. It's a pole fit. Pole fit, okay. P-O-L-E fit, fit underscore. Uh-huh. Okay. R-E-N-E-E X-O-X-O. Wow, okay. <laughs> I so love the confident you that I'm experiencing now because I th- and I, I'm so behind that um your message that mm-hmm. so often when we begin to love ourselves, we are made to feel bad that oh no, you should be more caring and more generous for other people. Ah, the hell with it all, right? If I am yeah. not popped up and I'm barely surviving, what good yeah, can come wow. out of that? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Take care of yourself, most important, and be happy. So viewers out there, you heard her, take care of yourself. And the one way you know whether you are not or not is to be happy. You know, Mm -hmm. if something makes you smile, do more of it. If something doesn't turn you on, drop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the simplest Mm -hmm. way. Okay. Thank you so much, Rene. And um, with that, I just want to thank each and every of the viewers and then just write in your comments. Oh, wait, I, let me just read a few things to you, yeah? Uh, Rene, you are an inspiring role model of a strong woman and a mom overcoming adversity. Thank you for your idea of self-love. And then another oh, one thanks. says, thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing your story. Amazing. Thank you. Oh my you God, so out happy. there, I'm going to leave this recording on. Share it to as many mother friends that you know could do with the inspiration from this true story because we are never alone and we don't have to suffer in isolation. Okay. Thank you so much, you so much for today. Thank you Thank for having you, me. Ready.